Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the power of having faith. Many people underestimate the power that faith can have. The power of faith has been the result of some of the world's greatest inventions that man has created. It all started with someone who had an idea, put in the work to see it through, and who had the faith and a relentless belief that their work would pay off. You see, without faith, everything seems impossible. Lack of faith gives us doubt, a list of obstacles that might or could happen. It makes our efforts seem like they're in vain. However, when you have complete faith and belief in any area of your life, the impossible becomes possible. We see the unlimited possibilities that the world offers, and instead of seeing all of the reasons why we could fail, we see the one reason why our dreams can indeed become a reality. Having faith comes in all forms. It can be your faith in something higher than yourself or simply the belief that you are destined for greater things. Wherever the source of your faith comes from, faith is the source of all possibilities. As the saying goes, your faith can move mountains and your doubts can create them. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. What are you guys currently working on? Oh man, right now, uh, we got a brand new album called Translation. Mm -hmm. It's out right now. And uh, you know, that's what we've been, we've been doing th uh, during the pandemic is just, you know, making music. Next up on the show, we have Apple the App, who is a singer and record producer best known as a member of the Grammy Award winning hip hop group, The Black Eyed Peas. Apple, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing in this early morning? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, you know, blessed and thankful that, uh, you know, we're still able to do certain things, um, you know, during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Black Eyed Peas is such, it's one of my favorite groups. And honestly, it's it's really an honor to have you on the show. So I'm really excited about this one. I was I was nervous. I was excited all these past couple of days. I've been putting it on my Instagram, just blasting it out. But so thank you for for being here. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you for having me. And uh, you know, it's uh, just an honor to be um, on, uh, on this show. Thank you so much. So let's talk about. Let's get into when you discovered your passion for music and how it all started. Well, um, you know, I would say um, I was um, adopted from the Philippines and I got to the U.S. at the age of uh, 14. And, you know, coming from, you know, being adopted, you know, I wanted, you know, it was, I wanted to help my parents and my family have like an education, mm -hmm. something academic. But I got to the U.S. and then uh, uh, the first person I'm, uh, I'm, I met is Will I Am. Yeah, incredible. And, uh, and then we started, you know, started hanging out, and um, you know, he he inspired me to start to start rapping. One day he was just like, "Yo, you know, like, cause uh, cause um, he was like, what are you doing Philippines? You know? Yeah." Uh, I'm like, oh, you know, I, I couldn't speak English properly back yeah. then yet. You know, I was like, oh, you know, I go to school <laughs> and I I like to take care of uh, water buffaloes <laughs> and, and I break dance. Yeah. Dance. He's like, what the hell? You break dance all the way from the Philippines? I'm like, yeah. Um, you know, I seen it on. Uh, a movie or a, a Pepsi commercial, and uh, I wanted to learn it. And so, you know, I started. I was practicing before I was, um, you know, before I was. Uh, I got to the U.S. And then that was like the common bond. Like, oh, what you you break dancing? Like, show me, show me. So, you know, I had to show him a couple of moves. Uh, I did the the Running Man, and it just became. It's just like you know, we just clicked after that. And then um, one day he's like, yo, um, there's, there's a, um, I'm gonna put on some beats. We were in my bed, we were in a recreation room in our apartment building at a time. He's like, I'm gonna put on some beats and just like, you know, just 
just freestyle, just say yeah. anything on top of her head. I was like, what? <laughs> I can barely speak English, man. <laughs> um, but it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just try to like put it on, on rhythm and like, and, and put it on beat. And I was like, well, okay. So he put on the beat, you know, the beat was going. And then the only thing I could think of was this, was this, uh, this, uh, these lines. And it went like this. So, you know, there was a beat. And then I was like, Abakada ega aila mananang o para sata uaya. He's like, I knew it. I knew it. See, I knew it. You could rap. And he's like, oh, What wow. did you say? I was like, and then he was like, what did you say? I was like, the ABCs in Tagalog. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, it, uh, it just came, it, you know, and then um, from then on, I started writing. I started practicing, uh, uh, rapping, and just writing my own lyrics. And then, uh, you know, I'm like, okay. Um, I wanted to be a nurse or uh, an architect. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I'm like, <laughs> oh, because I... You know, um, no, um, I have a condition called nystagmus. I'm legally blind. So, yeah. you know, when I stumbled on music and rapping, I'm like, oh, wow, I could do this. You know, like, you know, with being a nurse, with my vision, it was going to be hard to administer shots. I'm like, where's the vein? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not a good and, uh, idea. <laughs> you know, and back then, you know, we didn't have the technology for uh, architect uh, architecture, you know, with the cute angles. There's a lot of like small, you know, uh, lines. And, um, and but now we have that technology and I'm actually thinking about uh, going back to school for that. Wow. And, and then like, and when I stumbled on like, oh, you know, I could, you know, I could write, I could make music. It just gave me the, like, the motivation, like, oh, I could, I don't need my vision mm -hmm. uh, to do this. All I need is, is my brain, uh, my soul and my heart. And yeah, it's something yeah. that I could do, you know, with, with, uh, you know, with, with the, um, you know, not, with a disability and the challenges that I had, mm -hmm. so music, that freedom to, to express myself and be creative. Yeah, I think that's so inspirational that you know, you have vision problems. You said you were legally blind. I mean, that would stop the majority of people because people get stopped by little things, and this is something big, and and it, it hasn't stopped you. I mean you are so successful and I think that's so amazing. So what kind of pushed you through? Did you ever have doubts or did you ever think I can't do this? Or did you ever, what kind of pushed you through the fear um, to, you know, go after your dreams no matter what? Oh man, I go through it every day, you know, yeah. like I always have to like almost psych myself up every yeah. day, like, you know, but like um, with, you know, with, with, you know, with music and, and, and break dancing, it just gave me like, like, you know, like I felt normal. I felt mm -hmm. normal just um, in, in, in creating music. And, and you know what? And I didn't let it, uh, I, do, I don't let it stop me from what I have to do, even if I have to like, you know, uh, go beforehand and master the stage before yeah. I go out with all the lights and the and the crowd. I do certain things, you wow. know, I do extra things to make me feel comfortable and make me feel confident, you know, which is uh, going in advance and like checking out the stage. All right, I'm going to be right here. I know there's gonna be lights right here. There's a hole right there. Watch out for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, stage and uh, and like I, I always push myself. You know, like um, I think there was one teacher that like really helped me out um, growing up in the Philippines because um, he would make me read the board and you know I always like I'm like I can't read I can't see from here. Yeah, I can't from here, 
it's hard for me to read it. She's like, well, you, well, get up, you get up and and walk up to the board where you can where you, where you can read it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And at first, at first, I took it like. I took that as like, oh, she's picking on me. Yeah. You know, she already knows that I'm, I that I can't see, but she always picks me to read. You yeah. know. But you know, now, now, like, you know, as I gotten um, older, I realized she was actually pushing me. Mm-hmm. You know, she didn't want to like just be the quiet kid in a in a in a, in a classroom just because I couldn't read the board. She's like, what? get up and read it you know mm-hmm. and, and of course you know when you were when I when I, when I was when you're young mm-hmm. I was like I was so embarrassed you know I, I was like you know I had you know I had crushes mm-hmm. and then I'm oh my god she's seeing me do <laughs> this all of these things going on you know yeah. and and but like you know by going through all of that that gave me strength in like mm-hmm. whatever I do in life, you know, mm-hmm. even if it's a, 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 a challenge, it's like, no, you, that, that can't stop you. You have to like push harder, you know, yeah. like find ways of like, you know, like because I could, I could break dance. I could do somersaults and stuff like that. I'm like, how do you, how can you do that? I'm like, well, I could see enough mm-hmm. that I can, I, that I could, you know, I could feel my body. I could, I, I know, like, and I just think uh, geometry in my head. You yeah. know, I think a lot of inside in my head. Like, I envision everything. Yeah. And and those those little things gives me um, like motivation and just like uh, just normal, just like everybody yeah. else. You know? Yeah, yeah. That, that's incredible. You know, th- your story is exactly where I started doing my show. It's to inspire people and to teach them and show people like you who who have, you know, defied the odds and have still made their dreams possible. So I, I'm, I'm really touched. And I actually got goosebumps when you said your story because it's just, I know for me, I can share, obviously I'm not blind, but I, without my contacts, I cannot see. Like when I... If when I don't have my contacts on, like even light or like big blobs of, of you, can, you know, right? you know how so, it is, right? Yeah, yeah. After you know, so I, you got to kind of like you got to maneuver through that, right? And find your way, even just feeling things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then um, you know, I I'm think uh, it's still I'm so thankful that I find these little ways. Yeah. Um, that that like that keeps me going, and not like be stifled and like you know with with my disability. Definitely, and, and that's the way to go is to let nothing stop you. I had interviewed someone um, years back who climbed count. Uh, sorry, Mount Kilimanjaro. He climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with no legs. He he was disabled from the waist down, and he climbed this mountain to raise money for charity. So I always like to see people who, you know, defy the odds and are determined to make their dreams happen no matter what. So I think that's incredible. Let's talk about all of your success with the Black Eyed Peas. You guys are so big. Everyone in the world knows you guys. But, you know, as you said, you met Will I Am a long time back. So how did you guys meet and how did this whole group start? Yeah, so, um, um, like I mentioned earlier, I was a sponsored kid from the Philippines. Um, um, yeah, but you know, there's a lot of like abandoned. Uh, we, we, they're, we're called the Mauritian kids in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. You know, abandoned from like, you know, uh, so American soldiers mm-hmm. and there was there was station mm-hmm. there. And you know, my mom discovered a foundation called Pearl S. Buck Foundation, mm-hmm. where they where they support um, abandoned uh, admiration kids. And and what they do is they find, uh, uh, they, they get sponsors from the U.S. to support a kid um, through schooling and and uh, um, a, a allowance mm-hmm. uh, monthly to, to help out. And uh, my mom signed me up in that. 
And then you get to uh, write uh, a thank you letter, mm -hmm. a thank you letter to your sponsor. And, and you know, in my letters, I would, um, I would just tell my life story to my dad. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I started along with um, like, Hey dad, thank you. Thank you for supporting me in my schooling and um, and my family. And I truly appreciate all the, um, you know, for helping me out with, with my tuition fees and books. And mm -hmm. and um, and at the same time, you have to show your, your grades. And, I, and I, would, I just, I would just, you know, apologize. I'm sorry for my, um, for my, uh, for my math, my math grade. Yeah. Um, I know it's. I know it's. Uh, it's pretty low because I'm having a hard time seeing the board. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I, I told him the story about you know my my nystagmus and uh, I'm having difficulties uh, going to school, and so so I'm sorry uh, for my math grade. It's kind of yeah. low. Mm -hmm. And then by telling him that story, he kind of like. Gave him the idea like, oh, I want to, I want to uh, take you to the U.S. Wow. and and wow. have, and have like American ophthalmologists look at your vision because you know we're pretty, you know, it's more advanced with with technology. Mm -hmm. And then that's like you know, uh, I think that sparked the, the whole adoption thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Um, Took me to the U.S. back in 1986. Um, took me to all the top uh, ophthalmologists from Jewel Stein to uh, doctors in Beverly Hills, and uh, you know, came to find out it was uh, you have to be under seven years old to uh, to uh, fi uh, uh, operate and fix this condition. Mm -hmm. So you know, found that out, and um, during our uh, during our, our breaks, we, he would take me to like Disneyland and Universal Studio. You know, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, this is America. <laughs> like, you know, like, it, just, it just blew me away, you know? Yeah. And I was like, one day uh, during uh, dinner, I was like, um, uh, Mr. Regents, uh, you know, I'd like to help my family. Would you adopt me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this came, you know, yeah. this came ahead, and he's like, oh, "Well, son, um, uh, I have to talk to the Philippine government and uh, your mother, and uh, let's see, uh, you know, let, let, let's let's think about it." Mm -hmm. And then, oh, um, send me back to the Philippines, and then you know, when I got back, he he processed the adoption. You wow. know, and then, yeah. then three years later, then I got back uh, to the U.S. in 1989, and then, um, you know, Will's, uh, my adopted father was was uh, best friend with Will I Am's uncle. Oh, wow. And, and then before I was enrolled in school, they're like, um, my dad, did, my dad needed a babysitter before mm -hmm. I was. Old. So uh, Will's uncle was like, oh, uh, Joe, um, my sister Deborah could take care of Alan until uh, he's enrolled. And uh, she has a kid about the same age. Wow. And, and then, then they took me to East L.A. That's where Will lives. And then uh, she, um, Deborah, which is Will's mom, made him stay home from school uh, to hang out from the kids from the Philippines. It's like, what? Wow. You know, and yeah. then, uh, and then, um, then that's how we met, and it just kind of like evolved from that, you know. Wow, that's that's incredible. So it was written in the stars for you guys to meet and start this. I mean, that's what it sounds like. The fact that with everything you're telling me, it, it really sounds like it was meant to be. I'm sure your your family is so proud of you looking back, you know, a kid from the Philippines coming to America, they must be so proud of your success. What do they have to say about everything that you've accomplished? Oh man, I, <laughs> my mom, yeah, yeah, I could, uh, <laughs> I, I never know how to answer these, these, this question because I, I um, 
I felt, you know what? Here, I felt it one time. Like, yeah. I did the, uh, I did Sea, it's called the Sea Games. Mm -hmm. I did the Sea Games in, in the Philippines, which is our Olympic that only comes like every uh, 16 years, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And, and I did the, uh, I'm, I was part of the show. I, you know, I did the concert for it and uh, the whole ceremony, you mm -hmm. know? I was the, um, did the torch run and everything like that. And then my sister was in the audience, you know? Mm -hmm. she, was, she was watching it live at the stadium. And, you know, after I did the, the whole show, you know, I've never heard her say, <clears throat> say this before she's like she was like oh my god i'm so proud i'm glad i'm glad i'm your brother Aww. you know yeah. i know you know I'm, it, like you know that made me that made me like tear up of course i mean it's kind of hard to like uh you know oh yeah my my family's proud of me you know it, yeah. to me it's more like to me, it's more like, oh, I gotta do, oh, I gotta always be on point for my family. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, I think, like, you know, I think they're really, really they, I think they're very proud. Of course. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they're beyond proud of you. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> Let's yeah. let's talk about one of the milestones you've had in your career because there's I'm sure there's been so many you know over the years but what's one milestone that really stands out for you um, in your career that where you were like okay I made it. <clears throat> um, the milestone was um, well I'm gonna show, I'm gonna I'm gonna do two so um, you know. In, in the music business, we really had to prove ourselves back in the days, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, growing up in L.A., it was, you know, music, music industry was predominantly like gangster music back in the day. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we would we would make demos, demonstrations and send them to like record companies. And, you know, we would always get like, you know, because we were so different, we were, mm -hmm. you know, break dancers and positive lyrics and and just um the culture of hip-hop you know yeah and you know they were like oh you know you guys are talented but i don't think your music is that is tangible it's, wow. it's tangible and you know yeah and you know it was that was pretty devastating to hear like you know i'm like tangible what is that <laughs> is that orange <laughs> <laughs> They tell me it's tangerine, tangible. No, <laughs> and uh, we really had to prove ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we we we, um, we were like, you know, we would not, we would we take no for an answer, and we're gonna prove it. We're gonna prove it that our music is tangible, whatever that <laughs> word is. And then we would like play at, 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 at lunchtime at colleges, at UCLA, USC. Um, Cal Pomona, Cali Pomona, and we just like, um, and then after the show, you know, since since there's no like internet or Facebook, we would mm -hmm. get ev uh, ad addresses, ad wow. address, and then so wow. we could mail him, they could mail them the flyer for the next show. <laughs> wow. And then and then our show started getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Start like. You know, now every show is like, uh, you know, 500 to 1,000 to 2,000. And then the record company started approaching us again. You know, it's yeah. like, oh, it's like, who are these guys? You know, yeah. it's like, remember those demos that we sent you guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then and that became a bidding war to sign the Black Eyed Peas. So that was a milestone, wow. you know? And, and another thing was, you know, um, you know, we were on our second album with Interscope and, um, you know, we weren't making the quotas as, uh, as, as they like, and there was a fear of us, you know, being dropped from the label mm -hmm. and, you know, we were a little bit on a hiatus kind of down and, and then like, and then, then, um, 9-11 happened, mm -hmm. 
then uh, we were due to go out on tour and we were like, you know, should we still do it? Mm -hmm. But we sat, uh, you know, things was, you know, things are blowing up, buildings falling down. And we're like, should we still tour? Yeah. You know? And, but then we like collectively were like, all right, let's still do it. You know, this is our calling. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to provide um, uh, a therapy or, or, or or escape for people right now. Exactly. And then um, we still went on tour. And then by the end of that tour, we wrote Where's the Love. Yeah. Oh, that's such an amazing song. Wrote, wrote Where's the Love. And that got us like known internationally. That yeah. got that song like, you know what I mean? We're not just like a, 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 a national band. We became international after that. Yeah. You know, what? And, and another one, mm -hmm. after, you know, I remember being homesick mm -hmm. from being adopted and I was like, I wanted to be sent back home because mm -hmm. um, I miss my family. And then, you know, me and Will would always be like, it's like, don't worry, Ab, don't worry, Ab. You're gonna make, we're gonna make it, man. We're gonna make it. Then we're gonna go back to Philippines and perform in front of your family. Wow. And wow. that was like my more, that was always like, ah, oh, you know, yeah. that gave, that was always a motivation. And then a decade later, we go back to Philippines and uh, perform in wow. front of my family. The president was there, the army was there, and yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any more epic than that, right? Especially with your family yeah. there. Sometimes that's all you need, you know, just your family to say you're they're proud of you. No matter how much success you get, sometimes just your family being proud of you is all the success you really need sometimes, you know? That's incredible. What an incredible uh, story. You know, what do you think the key to your success has been? Because as you said, Black Eyed Peas has always been really different. You guys have a really unique musical style. That's why I always loved you guys, because your music is different. It's not like the cookie cutter music on the radio. So what do you think has been the key to your success and the group's success? Uh, remaining, remaining, remaining a student, remaining a student in the game and uh, always have an open mind and um, you know, not not being scared to, to push the envelope. You know, mm -hmm. we always we always try to incorporate like different things in, in in our music. You know, our base is hip hop, but we like expanding and trying new music genres on how we can fit it mm -hmm. into our style. Yeah. You know, and as well as you know, beyond beyond uh, a group, we are family. You know, yeah. we are brothers and. We're not like, we're so open into like constructive, constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? When, when, when we're creating, we're not afraid to like, hey, I think you could do better. Or you could, or let's try this. Or let's, you know what I mean? Like, let's be open and thinking of like, uh, thinking like, not just thinking worldwide when you mm -hmm. write music and, and the way you, uh, um, the messaging and stuff like that and and like you know ne don't never f don't forget your, your humble beginnings and where you come from that's always that always gives mm -hmm. you that like extra edge of like and, and like cherishing and then like into like taking opportunities like really seriously you know what i mean mm -hmm. you like don't take it for granted and um and yeah and, and our family our family it, it keeps us grounded mm -hmm. and uh, motivated yeah i love that that you said constructive criticism i actually did a show on that a couple weeks ago where i talk about the importance of constructive criticism because i feel that you know so many people are able to give you advice but not take it and then when you tell them they get offended but i think the key to success as you said and that's why you guys are so successful is constantly growing and as you said being a student so i, I really love that you, you said that what are you guys currently working on oh man right now uh, we got a brand new album called Translation. Mm -hmm. It's out right now, and um, you know that's what we've been, we've been doing th uh, during the pandemic. It's just you know making music, uh, um, um, 
providing that escape since we're all stuck at home. Uh-huh. And, uh-huh. Um, you know, we've released uh, how many singles now from Ritmo to Feel the Beat to Mamacita. Loca. <laughs> Mamacita, Loca. And, and now the, the most anticipated song mm-hmm. that's asked for a video it's called Girls Like Me featuring Shakira. So, Oh, wow. Um, nice. Fit, we just finished that video. So it's being edited and uh, very excited for it to come out. And then uh, we're working on J. Ray Soul's album. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I dis- uh, discovered her from the Philippines, brought her to the U.S. And she's been featured um, um, all over uh, translation and Masters to the Sun album mm-hmm. and we've been developing her so we're finishing our album and then working on the next uh, next translation translation wow. amazing honestly I I love your music and thank you so much again for being on the show it's been an honor and it's been so inspirational like I feel so inspired by your story I feel like I feel pumped <laughs> uh, thank, so, you. thank you thank you thank you for yeah. uh, letting me uh, uh, tell me my story, um, you know, uh, there's so many kids just like me out there, and hopefully this uh, they'll, this will inspire. It definitely will. So thank you so much for being on the show and come back anytime, anytime you would like to come, okay. please come back. I will. I will. <laughs> all right. I will. Thank you. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.